Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection February 10, 2023 Friday Memorial of Saint Scholastica Virgin The Fifth Week in Ordinary Time We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 to 8. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her. And he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. And they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. When they heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the garden at the breezy time of the day, the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Gospel of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 32 verse 1 to 2, 5, 6 and 7 Let our response be, Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. Response. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. My guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord. And you took away the guilt of my sin. Response. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. For this shall every faithful man pray to you in time of stress. Though deep waters overflow, they shall not reach him. Response. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. You are my shelter. From distress you will preserve me. With glad cries of freedom you will ring me round. Response. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Mark chapter 7 verse 31 to 37. Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and, spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned, and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed. And he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished and they said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. 
Also, please hit the notification bell. So you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel Why is Christ and Christianity still hated in the world today? After all, he brought all good things to life. Everything he said and everything he did made life better for all of us. We testify to the truth. We, who have been touched by him, healed by him and changed through him, are more beautiful all because of him. The deaf man begged Jesus to heal him and he did. And his life changed forever. What do we know about this man? He was born deaf and had a speech impediment. We know that one leads to the other. We also know how these half-naked and half-starving people were treated. Were they of any benefit to society, family and neighbor? I will never forget reading of the remorse Dr. Jerome Legion felt when he learned that his discovery of the gene that caused Down syndrome was being used to abort babies. These beautiful children would come to me and ask me, why do they want to kill us? What could those children, born of a lesser God, do? Their only option was to beg for help, mercy and compassion. Often, too often, they were abused as children and cast aside as adults. Physical pain and emotional abuse are colorblind and deaf to pleas of mercy. We know all too well the story of King George VI of England and of his speech impediment. Although he was born in a family of excess, fed with silver spoons and placed in a beautiful crib, he lacked what we almost need. Love, compassion and physical tenderness. He did not lack a voice. He lacked what we all desire. Being heard and understood. He knew he was special and for all the more reason he felt broken hearted. But when God's providence truly kicked in and kicked his brother out, he rose to the occasion in the same manner he had learned throughout his teenage years, how to survive, by never giving up. For this reason, he was able to attack that most primitive of doctrines that was plaguing enlightened Europe at the dawn of World War II. The primitive doctrine that might is right. It has taken years for his story to be told and we are the better for it. The deaf man was healed. He dedicated himself to preaching the good news of what had happened to him and who had done it. His life was never the same again. He could live again and experience what we take too much and too often for granted. The deaf man, like the blind man and even the cave man, would no longer be labeled by his handicap or discriminated out of ignorance. This unnamed man had a voice filled with passion to tell the world what God could do if we would only approach him with pure humility and unadulterated love. For this reason, he did not join the human race to make it a better place. He united himself to the Lord and showed the world that with God, nothing is impossible. Yes, a culture of life, freedom, respect, fidelity, compassion and forgiveness are all possible that hopelessness can be replaced with unexpected joy, and love can conquer all things for those who believe. What good thing did Christ do for me? He gave me back my true identity. I no longer need to be known for my defect, for my sin. I can now be known for His grace. Why is Christ still hated in the world? I have no idea. All I can say, is that its source is not of this world and it has failed to do good things.